Bill Schaefer. This is Hyena Gallery in Burbank, California. We've been here since 2006 and we specialize in dark art, outsider art, anything kind of unusual from illustration to fine art. But we probably show more art than any gallery in the world. We do a, a show, a featured exhibit, every 15 days. So it's twice a month. And in between that we also do like book signings, we do special events. There's always something going on. But the main focus is the art exhibits. So it's every 15 days um, we feature a whole new set of art on the back few walls here, usually featuring one artist or a split show with two artists. Uh, every now and then a group show we can have up to 30 or 40 artists back here. Featured right now in the rotating gallery is the Enzo and Pigger's exhibit uh, called Cupi uh, Creeping Beauty. And that's what you see all around here. It's two artists doing artwork based off each other's work because they ended up being very big fans of each other. And it's, it's a really great, unique collaboration. Um, Eric Piggers is known for Toxic Tunes. He's worked for Disney. Hello. Um, he's done cartoon work with Ed, Ed, and Eddie on Nickelodeon. And he's just been a fixture for, for years in the scene. He's done t-shirt designs for Metallica, the Murder Dolls, the Jenna Torturers. Uh, Dienzo is Rick Dienzo Blanco. He's been around for a few years. He's a little bit newer. Um, definitely one of my more popular artists. His style is just so creepy and cute and, and just it's perfect for most people's aesthetic if they dig this kind of thing. Um, he works for a Cartoon Network currently and they've just both met through the gallery and again became fans of each other's work. Back in the 90s there used to be a few asylums uh, there was one in Alabama and one in New York that actually had art shows. It was part of the therapy, and the art was pretty affordable, and it was really incredible. And you could see, like, you get into the psychology of art, and you see how schizophrenics have the same type of uh, idiosyncrasies in their artwork. There's looping patterns, there's eyeballs, there's a need to fill up an entire page with no space left over. And I just got fascinated by it. Uh, part, of, part of what I get really excited about is showing artists that other other galleries don't show because they don't have the experience yet. So there's a lot of new up and, up and coming artists. Uh, like Brian Smith is another one we brought aboard this year. Um, a really, really unique thing. Like here, here's a human skull. Um, this, this just came into our possession uh, recently. Uh, I'm not quite sure the history of the piece. It's definitely authentic. He's missing a few teeth, so he's had a rough, I think a rough afterlife more than a rough life. Yeah, it's part of the serial killer stuff we carry. Uh, this, this is how I got into art, so I always have a little bit of it kind of floating around the gallery. It's really maybe about 5% of what we do. Here's like a, a drawing by Charles Manson. Next to that we have a scorpion made of yarn that Charles Manson did in his cell. Now, is this something that is acquired through uh, representation for him, or do you have like some link to him or something like that? Or? I don't contact him personally. Uh -huh. Like I, I know a lot of collectors and people who do write to the killers. For me, that's, that's a lot of work, and it's you know if, if you don't keep them happy, you create a weird relationship, and I, I just don't need that nonsense in my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but like I, I've been collecting this stuff for about 20 years. So I'm really tied into a network of people who are very legit and trade in this type of merchandise. So if we get a Jeffrey Dahmer thumbprint. This prison number. Yeah, you know, various autographs, some Manson signed Bible page. Uh -huh. uh, you know, little chicken scrawls from people like Danny Law and Lucas. Well, one of the really coolest things I have, actually, like a grabbing by the name of Wayne Love. He was a spray shooter in the 90s. Um, shot up a place called Simon Drock College, which was very close to where, where I was from at the time. I was actually the band that played that college often. And what's so unique about Wayne's stuff is I actually deal directly with Wayne. He produces art to sell, to donate the proceeds to a scholarship fund in the name of one of his victims. So, and Why just one of them? Because uh, it's, it's, uh, the father of one of the victims actually contacted him and they developed a rapport and this is just how it came about. Wow. Um, the unique stuff about this art, though, it's, it's embroidery on manila folders. This is actually individually threaded, and I, I've just never seen anything like it. It's like folk art, it's outsider art, it's fine art, it's, you know, all wrapped in the one. And this is one of our Gacy paintings, actual oil painting by John Wayne Gacy. Um, 
this was commissioned by a gentleman. When, when I acquired this, it came with a stack of letters uh, between Gacy and, and the gentleman. And he, he was basically trying to get Gacy to paint him in the graveyard. So th this has been floating around for a little bit, but it's, it's one of my favorites. It's so eerie and weird. Who is this guy? Um, I, I don't know if he wants his name oh, put okay. out there. <laughs> but uh, he, he was a movie producer for a while. Uh -huh. um, and he, he was writing to Gacy, talking about a movie he was making that had to do with serial killers. And that's how he um, ended up commissioning the painting. Yeah, This is a really unique piece that you probably won't see in many art galleries. Uh, it's more of a museum piece, but it's, it's one of my favorite things I've ever come across. And it's, it's an original Albert Durer uh, engraving from 1496. Um, Durer was known as the draftsman of doom. He's probably the forefather of all the dark art you see around you, whether the artists know it or not. But he was a deeply religious artist, worked for the church, and this piece is called The Monstrous Sow. And what I, what I like about it, it, it's, aside from the quality and like the untouchable craftsmanship in it that, that's held up over 500 years, it, it's a, a warning to the populace about the apocalypse. So a, a deformed pig was born in the town of Lanzer, and this is his rendition of what it would look like as this grown-up beast that the devil has set upon the earth. So this was distributed in pamphlet form throughout the countryside just to warn the populace that the apocalypse, apocalypse is coming, get your stuff in gear, because God is raining down. And it's just such a cool piece. And how did you, how did you become, were you aware of the artist beforehand? Or? Oh, the, the artist is a really famous Renaissance artist. Uh, most people have probably seen his work and never realized it was him. Uh, there's a famous praying hands that people get tattooed on them left and right. Mm -hmm. um, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, these really great line drawings he had done. Uh, that, that's Chris Sapp. He's an up-and-coming artist. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of his work. And just the care and thought he puts into creating a diorama um, of a fine art piece uh, just kind of blows my mind. He's done a whole interpretation of the tarot deck before. Um, this piece here is from a show we had done. Called Halifax, and uh, I don't know. I'm just enamored by his work. He's actually getting shown by other galleries now, uh, some bigger galleries. So I expect a lot from him in the future. Another one. This is Sergeant Pepper. I'm not quite sure if he hates the Beatles as much as I do, but <laughs> it's a really great piece. Up here we have some of my favorite stuff as well by an artist named Kevin Clint. He's a corpse maker, a professional corpse maker. Uh, these are trophies he's made um, for the killing of a zombie and the killing of a vampire. Just kind of mounted like you would any animal that you've shot on safari. And he does it uh, for like uh, special effects for future films? Yeah, he, he does props for films, props for TV shows. Uh, death metal bands will call him up and tell him he made a few corpses for stage. And his stuff just has such a realistic tone to it. I love him. I'm a big fan. And he goes by the name of, he goes under the Ed Gein collection. So a lot of what he does, he imagines, you know, Ed Gein's house, the serial killer. Yeah. He supposedly makes cereal bowls out of, out of skulls. So he imagines, like, what would it look like if Ed Gein was decorating your place? <laughs> so here's his lamp. You know, with, with the skin lampshade. A little fresh it looks. Yeah. And then here's one of his just picture frames that maybe Ed Gein put together. And that's an authentic death photo in there. You can see the model T4 behind it. I kind of like that. Yeah, Kevin Clinton, the nicest guy I've ever met. Too. He's like this six foot three giant of a man with a heart of gold. With a, garage full of corpses. We have a submission process like most galleries. It's probably a lot easier than a lot of galleries because I'm, I'm open to anything I do. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as it, it seems professional, has kind of the qualities I personally like, uh, which could be anything. Come down, we're at uh, 1928 West Olive Ave in Burbank. We're right in the middle of all the, the studios was NBC, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Disney, and right across from the historic Safari Inn outside. Oh. We do a lot of online business and we ship all over the world. Uh, you can find us at www.hyenagallery.com and hyena is spelled H-Y-A-E-N-A. -E we use the archaic spelling.
Cool. Thank you so much for everything <laughs> over. Right on, man. I appreciate it. Uh-huh.